Hello, and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With from Medical Update Online. Today, I'm talking to Hannah Bieber about the use of GLP-1 agonists in type 2 diabetes, and also about the role of the consultant pharmacist in diabetes. So please, could you start by introducing yourself? Hi, um, my name is Hannah Bieber. I'm a consultant pharmacist for diabetes across Leeds Health and Care Partnership, which is part of West Yorkshire Health and Care Partnership. Now, I want to focus on GLP-1 agonists. They've been in the news a lot lately, and I'm hoping that you can put them into perspective for us. Can we start with a brief recap? What do GLP-1 agonists do for people with diabetes? Yes, I mean, GLP-1 agonists have been around for a good while now. We started off with some pretty basic molecules that have to be injected more than once a day. um, And we're getting now to sort of these weekly, weekly subcut injections. And, you know, the general gist of it is it's something that our body produces. Our body already produces GLP-1. And this is something that basically we've recreated that. So it's a peptide um, and it acts on the GLP-1 receptors. And that has a plethora of different actions. So we have have it increases insulin secretion um, it decreases your glucagon secretion and um, it maintains and possibly increases your beta cell mass so that speaks to um i suppose the durability of that therapy so some of some therapies like sulfonurias you'll find work really good really well early in disease but not so great later on whereas actually what we know about glp1s and perhaps something that will change as we move into this era of the incretin therapies, um, I think probably what will happen is we'll think about using these earlier for their durability and the fact that they'll maintain people's beta cell mass, which is really important. Actually, we don't want to flog people's beta cells to the fact to the point where they've got none. So um so actually, these are really useful therapies for that. And also it delays gastric emptying, um, which which also creates this feeling of um, satiety and so you don't feel um hungry as hungry and you'll feel less hungry um over a longer period of time so so it means that people just don't want to eat the portion sizes that they would have done previously um people who do try to carry on eating as they were often will feel sick and nauseous so that speaks to the counseling that we need to do around do make sure you start to reduce your portion sizes otherwise um you will feel you will feel a bit pukey so yeah mm. just for clarity what is an incretin so an uh, incretin just does exactly what i've just said so it's just something that your your own body it's a peptide and it does all the things that i've just explained with the glp so it's just about the all the things that i explained right at the beginning it's just about making you feel fuller for longer um, making sure that, that you decrease your glucagon secretion, increase your insulin secretion, all of those things. That's what your incretin, incretins do, all of them together in a um, coordinated way. Now, there seems to have been a plethora of new products in this field recently. Where do tezepatide and retitrutide fit in? Yeah, so tizepatide and retrutide, um, these are what we call dual and triincretins. So the um the tizepatide is a dual incretin, so that's a GIP, GLP, so two incretins. Um, so you're getting like double bang for your book if you like with with that. Um and tizepatide, um, again, injectable, designed to be a weekly, weekly injection, very, very efficacious. So more efficacious than any of the other GLP ones that we currently have on the market. Um, trials have been really um, impressive so far. Obviously, we need to see the real world data where this isn't released yet. So um, so I do re- always remain slightly sceptical about tolerance, I suppose, until we see that landing. But everything in the trials suggests that they're w- as well tolerated as any GLP-1, similar side effect profiles, etc. So what they saw, um, so this amount two trial results were released at um, ADA this year, um, and what they showed was that about um, more than sort of forty five percent of people who were put on, you know, the incre- incremental dosing of tizepatide will reach normoglycemia, which is incredible, um, and over eighty percent will get to a HbA one C of less than seven percent. So in our money, that's fifty three. 
Um, so yeah, so really, really good. And also this, this weight loss as well associated. So getting more weight loss and some of our weight loss drugs. Um, so, so, um, so it's quite, uh, you know, it's nice to have that. And that really, what I find is that, you know, yes, it does, it does the impressive, what we want them for, I suppose, in diabetes is we want the, you know, we want the glucose well controlled, but the weight loss, you know, diabetes, type two diabetes is, is about, obesity it's about where you hold your where you hold your fat as well so people can look not obese but it's where they hold their fat around their liver and um, so if somebody's got non-alcoholic fatty liver disease for example um you know particularly this can be a problem in certain ethnicities so south asian people tend to hold more fat around around the liver which help which leads to sort of earlier development of diabetes and these drugs are very efficacious for managing that so you're getting anything sort of 15 percent or over of, of of weight loss with with these drugs which is really 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 good um so and that's that's really what people care about if i'm being absolutely honest if they get if they start getting some significant weight loss it completely inspires them to carry on um and then they'll even like make more lifestyle changes what you find is people just need to get over that hump of like getting nowhere with diet and lifestyle and i think sometimes if you start giving them a bit of support around the medication that actually that inspires them to do more with their other stuff so they will then start to exercise because they're feeling better they've got less weight on board and um, they can mobilize more easily and um, so it just it's kind of then a domino effect um, and you just find that everything kind of starts to fall into place for them so I've seen incredible results even with the GLP ones that are currently on the market and um, so I'm, I've got high hopes for this one Christine to Zepatide most definitely. Mm-hmm. And for Ritatrutide? This is a triincretin. So this has added in a glucagon to the mix. So we've got a GLP-1 glucagon GIP, um, and that had their triumph trial um, released, which is just in phase two at the moment. So we're much further away with that. It's still quite a long way off market. Um, also um, produced by Lily. So um, Lily's pumping out these ingredients like mad. Um, and they're looking at they what they've done is they've had this specifically looked at a very high risk um sort of collection of diseases so they've looked at somebody who's got obesity with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with type 2 diabetes um and again even more efficacious than tazepatide so we're looking at 20 to 24 percent weight loss which is incredible um and again decent you know similar side effect profile so i think with any of these things you're thinking others are going to be as well tolerated um you know you might get the efficacy but if people can't take it um then but it seems that you know the people in the trial have managed it and so yeah we'll we'll see high hopes for that one as well but-